Hi everyone, my name is Nick and today I am going to show you guys how to move tasks between your buckets in Microsoft Planner using Microsoft Power Automate. Um, this will be a pretty detailed tutorial, but if you do find it useful, you know what to do. And with that said, let's jump on over to the desktop. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually head over to office.com. Once you land in um, or log into your office.com account, you want to head over to two different apps. The first one you're going to want to head over to is Planner, and then the second one is going to be Power Automate. Um, so once you have your Planner open, um, what you want to do is actually just find the plan that you uh, want to move tasks between buckets in. Um, so in this example here, I've just got a, a sample um, plan called Supply Chain Planner, and I've created four buckets, bucket one, two, three, and four. I've then created a test task that I'm going to move uh, using Power Automate between bucket one to two, two to three, and then three to four. Um, and that's the process flow that I'm looking to achieve. Um, next tab that you want to open up is um, Power Automate itself, formerly known as Microsoft Flow. Um, and then once you're in here, what you want to do is actually click on create. Um, and this is going to start to create that particular um, flow. Now, what we want to do is we need this to be an automatic flow. So we're going to click this one here um, and then we're going to give it a name. So we're going to call this one move tasks. OK, um, and then the trigger needs to be when a task is completed. So I'm just going to type task, see what comes up. Um, so when a task is complete, so we're going to click that and then we're going to click create. Now, there's a couple of things just to note at this point in the video um, that uh, Power Automate does not have functionality to move tasks between buckets. Instead, you have to think a little bit more out of the box. Um, so if we go back to our planner here, instead of physically moving this task from this bucket to this bucket, this bucket uh, like you would drag and drop it um, unfortunately there's no um i need to complete that there is no functionality inside um power automate to basically reassign the bucket that the task is currently sitting in instead you need to, like i said before you need to think outside the box so in the my process flow what i'm going to do is complete this task when this task is completed I'm going to then reassign the task to bucket two. When it's completed in bucket two, it will move to bucket three. When it's completed in bucket three, it will move to bucket four. And when it's completed in bucket four, it will disappear completely. Okay, so there's a complete flow um, through the entire plan. Okay, so um, starting from bucket one, where you can again create tasks dynamically here. So if you have an email come in, um, for let's say it's a purchase order, you have a purchase order arrive in your inbox, you want to create the task to then pick the stock, for example. Once it's been picked, you can tick the task as completed and then create a new task for packing. You can then um, pack completed to delivery uh, or on um, in transit, for example, in bucket three. And then once it's been delivered, um, it goes to bucket four or maybe POD or whatever it may be. And then you can complete it off and close the process. Um, so that's what we're kind of creating. OK, so within our Power Automate, we're wanting to find when a task has been completed. And that's the first thing. So with this um, trigger as when task is completed, the first thing we need to do is actually find um, the supply chain team. So the group ID of uh, the plan, then find the plan ID. And we only have one here, which is um, the supply chain planner. And again, you can make these dynamic, but in this example, I'm just going to keep it as simple as I can. We're then going to add another step. The step for this has to be get uh, the task details. So I'm going to say get task um, details. OK, and then this is dynamic. We want to basically load up a dynamic value here. Um, and it's going to be the task that has been completed. What is the ID of that task? So we're going to put the ID value just in here. So that's the ID of the task that has been completed. From the step previously um, that triggered this whole entire process we're going to put that into the details this is then going to fetch all of the details about the task that has been completed and then we're going to add another step 
this time what we want to do is actually add a switch condition here okay um, so we're going to hit the switch and this then lets us look at a couple of things so our switch needs to be based on the bucket id yeah, right? so in this dynamic content here what we want to do is find the task that has been completed and what we want to do is find the bucket id and um, so it's called value bucket id and we'll put that into there okay so now what we're doing is we want to find the id bucket of this specific um, task now before we um, can enter the values here what we need is um, basically we need to know the id of every single bucket that we currently have um, so the easiest way to do that is just add a dummy step here um, and basically we'll call it add task okay so we're going to create a task that's the one um, we wanted to put this into our supply chain and then you get the plan supply chain um, give it a title blah 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 bucket id so here we can see that we have bucket one bucket two bucket three and bucket four right but these are not the ids so what we want to do is to start with the bucket one id here we'll peek the code um, here um, and we'll grab this bucket id so in this case if the task that's been completed has a bucket id that is equal to our bucket one then we want to add an action okay and what we want to do is create a task we're going to create task um, we're going to create a task and what we're going to do is basically now move the completed task into bucket two so i'm going to rename this um on, rename this um, move to bucket two okay and we're going to put this into our supply chain um, plan we'll just give this the title now the title should marry up the the task that was completed so we can grab the title value or the value title from the completed task and just drop that into there now the bucket id of the id that we we're trying to move this to so because we know that this id here matches bucket one we want to put this task into bucket two okay so if you follow me so far we have completed a task we've got the details of the task we then find the bucket id of the task that has been completed find that it equals bucket one and then we want to move it or recreate the task into bucket two okay now we can give it a start date and end date and we can assign it to people so you can have um, different people assigned to the tasks as you move through the process um, but I'm just going to leave that blank for now and that is the first one. I'm just going to rename this bucket one um, move to bucket two. Okay. Now what we want to do is basically add another one. Um, this time we want to close this off and change this to bucket two and then peek that code. This will then get us the bucket ID for bucket number two. And I've just done that. So there we go, we'll place that there. And then we'll create another task here. Um, simple enough. We kind of just repeat this process until we ha have basically completed our entire business flow. Um, we just call this the ID um, da, 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 title. Where are you? The value title. Okay, so the title. Um, we're going to move this to um, from bucket two to bucket three okay um, and again we can assign start and due dates and different um, team members to that task and um, what i'm just going to do is rename this move to bucket three and i'm going to rename this um, bucket two move to bucket three Okay, so there's um, two of them, and we're going to do the last uh, couple here. So this time again, we'll come down to this code, and we want the ID of bucket three. I'm going to peek the code here, and we're going to just grab this ID bucket and just copy that and just use some Control C. 
and come here, paste that in, add an action of create task. And we're gonna add that in. Um, again, we're just going to throw that into our supply chain scenario here. We're going to give it the same title as the completed task. We're gonna move this time um, from bucket three to bucket four. Um, and again, we can assign any of that that we need. So we're going to just rename this, move to bucket four, um, and then I rename this one um, bucket three, move to bucket four. Okay. Um, and that kind of takes care of that. So, and then there's a default option here. So if, um, this ID does not equal this, this, or this, then you can have a default set of actions, which could just be an email alert or something like that. Um, but I won't go into too much detail there. Now I'm going to do this um, thing that we're using down here, this create a task just to peek the code, we can now delete because we do not need it. We'll remove that from the scenario. The other thing that you want, might want to do here is actually input your details. So um, this was actually going to be called update task um details so this one just here um, and this basically lets you put the task id in um, and again this is going to be the created task up here so just need to actually add dynamic content into this um, so this uh, move to bucket two has a new id so the id of the task Okay, so this is the task that we want to update, and then this is the description. Now we can grab the description from the completed task. Um, so what we can do is just come down to um, the completed task and, uh, sorry, the task details here. So this task details, um, and grab the description and put that into there. So what this will allow you to do is, once you have created the task in initially, um, that could be for a different flow um, or manually, um, you can have each bucket add to the description um, and then carry that description over into the different buckets. Unfortunately, what you're not able to do is include things like lists, yeah, et cetera. Um, but you can include reference um, sources um, that are URL specific. So if you have um, an image assigned to a, a task, you can still pick that up. Um, and drop it in uh, across the tasks as well. Um, but it gets a quite complicated in how to do that um, because you don't really have access to a lot of the information from the task itself when it's being completed. Um, but uh, nonetheless, update a task with the description and you can carry that across. You obviously have the title as well. And again, you can apply this to all of these buckets. Um, so I'm just going to quickly do that. Okay, so there we go. So now we have um, basically created a flow here that's going to move the completed tasks across our buckets. And when it gets to bucket four, we don't need to do anything else. Um, we can um, basically just let that fall through the process and get completed and finalized. Um, we might want to do something here with an error handling in the future where we put an email in um, if it hasn't. Uh, equaled any of these. We could even just put a completed task scenario in for bucket four um, so that you can stay in the loop. I'm just going to click save on that one. Okay. So what we're going to do is tick off these tasks and watch the task move from bucket one to two, two to three, and three to four. And then from four, it will disappear out of the process. Um, sometimes it could take a little bit of time to um, basically send the information into Power Automate and then Power Automate to send it back into Planner. Um, so I might speed the video up a little bit depending on how quickly this works, um, but let's just see what happens.
Okay, there's the first one. Um, that did take about five or six minutes or so just to uh, move that over to bucket two. So we're going to do this again and see how quickly it moves over to bucket three. Okay, so that was a lot quicker. That only took uh, about one and a half minutes or so um, for that one to actually come through. Um, so we're going to now just complete this task and move it over to bucket four. And there you go, guys. Um, the last bucket has uh, basically received the task um, and that took um, less than 60 seconds. Um, so I think, um, I guess it all depends on how frequently this is actually happening and um, Power Automate is paying attention to the plan. So if you've got a lot of tasks um, and you're using something like this to control the flow, I think it will be quicker. If you're using it, um, like ad hocly and you know occasionally people are going to be completing tasks it might take up to five or so minutes um, as the example from bucket one to bucket two was the longest um, and then it actually sped up um, the more we were completing these quickly and um, so i'm just going to tick this off and that will be the end of the test task within the process and um, so we can see if i just expand these out um, it's the same task and that has basically been moved from one bucket to the other um, when I say same task, I mean we've create, recreated the same task multiple times uh, because we cannot easily just move it from one bucket to the other using Power Automate. Um, but this process works um, and it kind of gives you some added functionality as well where it allows you to change the people that can be assigned to each um, bucket. So if you have a specific team that run um, with bucket one, um, and you wait for them to complete it, then it moves on to team two, then team three, then team four, um, then this process will work very well for you. Um, if you found this uh, useful, you know what to do, um, and I will catch you guys in the next video.